Welcome to the episode of Jay Leno's Garage. Today we're going to talk about the new Cadillac uh, ELR. This is a hybrid car and uh, it's, it's pretty exciting. Cadillac has been doing some interesting things and that's why we invited him down. Before we get into the powertrain, let's talk about the design. Let's bring in uh, Frank Sarcito. Frank, come on in. Frank, you're, uh, what's, what's the official title? I'm director of uh, advanced design here on the West Coast for uh, General Motors. Ah, okay, that's what it is, <laughs> that's what it is. Frank was uh, instrumental in our uh, jet car. Remember this thing we built? Yeah, yeah well, thanks to him, uh, we got that done. And this, of course, it looks like a Cadillac CTSV, but obviously, a little bit different. Well, what are some of the subtle differences design-wise before you get into the powertrain? Well, again, in proportionally. Uh, this is a front-wheel drive car. Right. It's, it is a e-rev vehicle. Um, but it has all the classic Cadillac cues. Um, and this is a vocabulary that we've been building and our mission statement is art and science. So you still have vertical lamps front and rear. We've had them since 48. And it's something that we feel is a strong aesthetic cue that we need to carry through the brand. So this right. is kind of the next in the generation. And it's an extremely aggressive vehicle, and it has a really great proportion to it. Yeah, that's sort of my problem with a lot of hybrids. They kind of look like, they're like veggie burgers. They look <laughs> like hamburgers, but they, they don't really taste like It's not like a real hamburger. hamburger. It's not <laughs> a real hamburger. Yeah. Whereas this is a real car. It's got more than enough power, and of course you have all the advantages of... Uh, of the hybrid technology. Uh, what size wheels are we running Those are 20-inch wheels. And okay. again, too, it's, uh, they're, they're bigger than the other e-rev car we're running. Is there any advantage to a 20-inch wheel other than design and visual? Well, from the design side, the 20 is going to help proportionally. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it always, we always like bigger wheels. Um, from the ride standpoint, um, you know, going to a little taller tire can help with aero. Right. Um, so, but again, I think for us in this, we were really trying to capture our concept vehicle, which was a Converge, which we introduced in 2009. Now, this is kind of controversial design-wise. There's technically no grill, is there? No, it really, it, the air, most of the air is taken from, in, from underneath, and it actually baffles. So at speed, it closes. Right. But again, one of the things that Ed Wilburn, our vice president of design, was interested in doing is, how do you do a hybrid vehicle and do it so that it still has that Cadillac look. Right. So what type of grill are you going to do? So the, you know, um, the group that basically took the Converge, and the Converge was our, our roadmap, they wanted to keep that same grill and do right. something that speaks to Cadillac. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. You can't sell something before it's time. I've got a 1934 Chrysler Airflow. Here, take a look at the front of this car. Now, I think it looks fantastic, but at the time that that swoopy... Cascading grill, air, yeah. Uh, cascading, they just, people want, no, they wanted a radiator that was... <laughs> sort of upright and push the wind aside and, you know, to show you a powerful... Mm -hmm. The aerodynamic front end didn't work. People just thought it was too jarring. Now it's considered a classic. So it's kind of interesting that, that you want to go with something that's visually, you know... Cadillac, and then still have yeah. gain all the aero effect that, you know, right. uh, Chris and the team spent in the tunnel, you know, months and months and months trying to hone this surface to a really efficient... What, is the, uh, what is the coefficient of drag? 0. You know? 0.305. Okay, that's not bad, huh? No, that's, that's good. good. That's good, that's good. Let's, uh, let's go to the back of the car. This to me is the most successful part of the car because hopefully this is the part of the car most people will see. <laughs> when I'm driving my Absolutely. CTSV, this is what most people see. They're like, oh, look at that, the Cadillac. This is one of my favorite elements of Cadillac. This is the one that really uh, visually does it for me. That's why I like the CTSV. Um, it, it's a safety feature, but it's also uh, it looks really cool. Well, you know, it's been a challenge for us to carry over the fins without overtly just doing something yeah. retro. And I think the, what we've done, been able to done, do on the CTS and, and now with the ELR is to carry that tall lamp and you get the feeling of a fin without actually building a fin. You know, I never thought of it as a fin until you just said it. It just seemed like uh, sort of outstanding. It's, it's kind of a subtle read. If you look inside, yeah, there's these, right. these vertical right. fins that are in the inside, and you can see them. And during the day, daylight, on the front lights, you get that vertical fin, and it's really, we feel it gives a good down-the-road graphic to uh, Cadillac. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a really good-looking car. You know, there's nothing funnier to me than when I have uh, some of the young music groups on the show, and they talk about cars, and guys 18 or 19 all the time about getting a Cadillac. It, it just makes me laugh because I come from the generation where your dad had a Cadillac. <laughs> it, just, exactly. it just seems funny to hear young guys, whether it's the Escalade or I have a CTSV with a, with a six-speed in it. I mean, a Cadillac with a manual transmission. You know, whereas uh, Porsche and Ferrari have all given up on the manual, Cadillac still does it. And I think that's great. It makes it a, a fun drive. I just love the way this is all integrated here as well. Tell us about the design here from the back. Again, too, you know, this 
part of the, as we were talking about in the front, the arrow, this, the upper really just tapers extremely fast. And that's where we get you know, good arrow numbers and the length it steps onto the deck lid. And again, they spent a lot of time in the tunnel tuning this so that we could get maximum you know, downforce with the least amount of lift. And you know, that just improves your drag coefficient. That's probably time to bring in the powertrain, right? Chris, Tom, Chris, come on in. Chris, you're Chief Engineer Powertrain, is that what, what's the exact title? Actually, uh, Cadillac ELR, Chief Engineer Total Vehicle. Oh, Total Vehicle, okay, very good. So you're the guy to talk to. So tell us about here. We have the technology that, uh, uh, similar to the Chevy Volt, which of course, to me, I was quite proud. Even the Europeans voted it Car of the Year. Absolutely. And Technology of the Year. And it's fun when an American company gets to do that, especially versus the Europeans, because they're, you know, they're, they know what they're doing over there. And whether people like it or not, this is the future. I mean, by in 10 years, basically, all cars are going to have to get 54 miles per gallon. Exactly. And this it, is the best way to do it. You know, I've driven the Tesla, and that's a fantastic car as well. But the one thing I like about this technology and the Chevy technology is if you do get stuck, you can go to gas. And it's just nice to have that. That's know? right. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's a place in portfolios for battery electric vehicles. There's a place in a full uh, offering uh, OEM to have an extended range electric vehicle, as the Cadillac ELR is, which gives you that absence of range anxiety. So where is the exhaust system on this car? <laughs> Actually, it's, uh, it's a secret. No, it's, uh, it's uh, left side uh, okay. low, but we tucked it forward enough that it's just as you stated, when you come up behind the car, just like the front of the car, uh, you know, telegraphs to customers right. and other people that, hey, this is different, it's an electric vehicle, the rear does the same. And you know, I have a car called a 1916 Owens Magnetic, here's that car. A very primitive version of this, a gas engine running an electric uh, transmission, basically, which runs the rear wheels. They called it the car of a thousand speeds because there was no mechanical connection between the engine and the drivetrain. And that's basically what you have here. There's no mechanical connection between the engine and the drivetrain. You get a, a planetary gear set right. that has oh, okay. the modes of operation right. just uh, as we have with the other E-Rev offering in your Volt. That's correct. And you get quite a bit of torque with the electric motor. I mean. People are always surprised how fast these are. It, it, yeah. it really is an experience that's commensurate with a luxury vehicle because it's, yeah. it's what you're commanding immediately. 295 right. pound-feet of torque with this Something offering. we'll try in just a minute. You also have paddle shifters on this, and it, it's not a traditional paddle shifter, and you're not going through a dual-clutch gearbox. You're using a regen, is that correct? We learned from our customers and users who have uh, millions of miles on the car that uh, many of them like shifting to low to kind of have more interaction with the car and, right. and uh, enhance the regen experience. So we took that on a feature that people were doing uh, manually with the gear shift, put it uh, at their fingertips on the ELRs. So yeah. the paddle shifters now offer what we uh, reference as regen on demand. Yeah, I mean the Volt has a similar version. You have to move the gear lever. Mm -hmm. but. I rarely, not rarely use the brakes, but when I want to slow down, I'll drop it in a low and you'll sort of regen, you'll put electricity in, you're, you're saving brake pads and tires. Absolutely, you can approach a, a one pedal type of driving, but you know, what, yet when you want to come to a full stop, you know, cover the brake. Uh, can we open the hood? Foot. Am I going to see anything when I look in there? <laughs> you're going to see the uh, E-Rev propulsion well, let's system. let's see what it looks like anyway. Absolutely. For us old school guys, what do we have here cubic inch wise, what do we have motor wise? Well, motor-wise, you know, you, you have a 1.4 liter, okay. okay, and, you know, top at about 84 horse. Uh, so it's just enough to do what's required right. when required with the bulk of the propulsion coming through, you know, the uh, battery yeah. and the electric system. That was like me in school, system. just do exactly <laughs> what was required. I think I went to the same yeah, school. Yeah, just exactly. <laughs> just, Jay does this exactly. But, of course, that's... Uh, that figure is deceiving because your electric motor puts out a lot of torque, doesn't it? What kind of torque do you, are you putting out total? Uh, total torque, about 295 pound-feet. Okay. So tell, what, what, what do we have for headlights here? Well, as Frank mentioned, uh, they are part of the dramatic lit signature of the Cadillac brand, this forward light blade that uh, is very striking going down the road. This is the first time any manufacturer has offered uh, complete LED lamps uh, around the vehicle, so headlamps and tail lamps is standard. And we tried to do it uh, in a manner that uh, speaks to the technology, but also to the design. You can see the, the placard and the very elegant Cadillac right. script that's there, as well in the uh, 
tail lamp, when you, uh, you know, depress the brake pedal, that light bay lights up and there's a little Cadillac marquee that's been etched in there and illuminates. Well, let's take it for a ride and we'll go over the inside, uh, the dashboard and all the interior features on the drive. Obviously, we're full electric now, and look, you got some power. You know, it's funny, with an electric engine, all you hear is the rolling of the tires, which you would not normally hear in a gas car. It's, uh, it's amazing how eerily quiet this car is. But in sport, it's got some pickup. I think Cadillac is probably the most successful company in turning their brand image around that I've seen. I mean, it's gone from the Cadillac of my generation to an old guy's car to a really desirable sport vehicle. I mean, I drive my CTS-V more than I do my Corvette just because it's more practical. And with a six speed and 560 horsepower, it's a lot of fun too. What is the difference in your uh, mileage from sport to just the touring setting. Is there a big difference? Quite honestly, you can achieve the same mileage either way. Yeah. It's just a matter of uh, what it affords you to do in terms of your driving style. Here's a theoretical question. How long could this idle, let's say, with the air conditioner on? If you parked it and you left the lights on and the air conditioner and the radio, how long would it go before you lost battery power and the engine had to kick in. Not running. Not running. We, we let it go Days. quite on. No, we let it go quite honestly about uh, two hours now, somewhere in that range. Right. And then we bring the car down just I because see. we envision that somebody may have, because as you mentioned, hey, you hear nothing. Right. Somebody could potentially walk away, you know, right. distracted. All of us are busy. Right, and right. And just forget to power down the car. Right, right, right. So, well, and, this is the one I find fascinating. Now, watch here as I'm stepping on the on the uh, gas, gas, stepping on the accelerator. Okay, now I'm, uh, see, I don't have my foot on the accelerator, so I'm putting power back into the battery, correct? Exactly, and you'll see the same when you right. uh, depress now, the regen panel. Now when I step on it, if I floor it, I'm pulling power out. Now watch when I hit the regen paddles here. You'll see me you slow down, you see power going back into the battery, and then you'll see your your range go up one mile or two miles. Depending on uh, how long the descent is or the deceleration yeah. is and that type of thing, exactly right. It's fun to use the regen instead of the brakes. You know, it's a different kind of fun. Uh, this website's all about unique driving experiences, and that's what this is. You know, uh, you use the regen, you try to see how many miles you can get, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's I, I find it a fascinating game. I do it with my Volt all the time, see how far I can go. When I go down a hill, I just touch the regen and I see the battery picking up another mile or two that, uh, that won't be gasoline. How susceptible is an electric car to overheating? Is it less susceptible or more? Uh, it really uh, depends. Uh, the power electronics are what you need to watch. Right. So to to do that, it's uh, very important that we monitor all those temperatures that right. we do. But uh, I'd say neither more nor less. Just yeah. something that we uh, in the engineering community make sure is monitored and safe at all times. You know, batteries like to run at an optimum, what, 74 degrees Fahrenheit? Just like humans. Yeah, and when you see, this is why I was never a fan of the Nissan Leaf, because the battery is not water cooled. It's susceptible to the outside temperature. The Chevy Volt, the Fiat, uh, this car, with the battery being heated and cooled, you're always getting optimum performance out of your battery because it's not subject to the, you know, to, to the, uh, to the, to the elements. To the elements, exactly. basically, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Of course, the one question we didn't address, what does ELR stand for, do you know? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. It just so, sounds cool. Just, I'm glad there's no X in it. Everybody puts X's in for some reason. But, uh, well, there you have it. I want to thank Frank. I want to thank Chris. Thank you, guys. Oh, it's pleasure. fun to see uh, this technology being uh, developed here in America. And uh, it's a, I love these things. I, I think it's fantastic, you know. When I have a fast car, I like to go fast. When I have an efficient car, 
I like to be efficient. You know, it's fun to use a vehicle for the purpose of which it was intended. And this has, is a Cadillac that just happens to get incredible mileage. So very good. Thanks again. Our pleasure. See you guys next week.